Morning fellas, welcome to the vlog. We've come a different way around this morning and uh, I wasn't going to get any video but it's so bloody nice. Every time I come down here I think, you know I'm going to whip the camera out. Anyway I'll not bore you for too long this morning. Go on boys, go on then. We're going to go into work and we're going to find something productive to do. There's no brewing to do this week but there's plenty of other things to be getting on with. Wow, did you see that? I'm not sure what kind of bird it was, but you don't see many of them about these here parts. Well, you do these here parts, but not normally anywhere else. Anyway, let's go for a walk through the water and we'll see you at work. Well, it was such a lovely morning. I thought I'd get some sandpaper out and knock back all the tabletops. I put a coat of um, yacht varnish on all of these tables last last week. I nearly said last year then, that would have been a long time ago. And then I've come out today, knocked them back with a bit of sandpaper, which basically just means a quick rub over the top with the sandpaper to knock off any little prickly nibs of varnish and upstanding fibers. And then we've gone over with a second coat and you know I've tried all sorts on these tables from uh, Dutch or Danish oil even not Dutch Danish oil uh, right through to to yacht varnish and I think looking at the finish of these the yacht varnish is definitely the best so I'll probably go on to do the whole of the table with it at some point in the summertime also did the top of this barrel as well and these beauties over here. We've also put some fungal treatment on there because this is the remnants of a bracket fungus that grew on there last year. So we've put some antifungal treatment on it as well. That's taken up a little bit of time this morning. In fact, that's just put us on to 12.06. So I think it's about time we had a little stroll into town. I wanna to pick up some tomato seeds for the back garden. Oh, and yeah, this is the little bedding area that we're just going to get some some more flowers for this section here. But the Cyananthus is putting on a lovely display in its third year and it smells absolutely wonderful. Come on, Gem. They're made out of clay, aren't they? So yeah, we've just been to Wilco's and uh, we've got some big plant pots and some seeds. So I'm going to bore you all with some gardening videos later on this week. Maximum capacity, 40 litres. 40 litres, there we go. We know how much compost we need now. What's 40 times 6, Gem? 24. That'll do. So contemplating what to do today and uh, inspired a little bit by what Andy's done over the weekend. Again making me do more work watching his videos. I think we're going to take this plate chiller apart. I've never taken it apart from the day we bought it actually. And even though we've got an inline filter on ours of 0.75 microns, I suppose it'd be good practice to just have a look exactly what's in there. So I'm just going to quickly disconnect all the pipe work. It should be really quite easy to um, take down there's not a lot to it and i think i should be able to do it in situ with the way these plates are held in by this central bar so they can't actually fall out so i think all i need to do is just detach these two front fittings in fact we probably don't even need to undo the water one and then we can slide the whole plate forwards and we could take them out one at a time i'd like to do it on its back on a bench but I think this is probably the easiest way. All of the plates have been removed from the chassis. The only thing I've left behind is the cold water gasket for the cold water inlet. And that's because I had to take the hot work gasket off because uh, I dinked it. As you can see, this is one of the reasons why you shouldn't tighten any of these fittings whilst the plate chiller is in situ because that will spin and ruin the gaskets and the gaskets are basically 
just that. So that fits on there. When we put it together again, we'll have to make sure we get the correct orientation because there's an imprint in this one. And we'll make sure it lines up with the existing pattern on the on the plates. So this is the back plate. Obviously, this gasket's glued in because it's just there for uh, compression purposes. So we don't end up squashing the shape out of the back plate. And then if we look inside, then all we've got that's left over really are one or two little bits of the old hose that deteriorated on us recently and the occasional spot of hop but the hop I've noticed has been literally bleached white so that's testament to the caustic cycle that we put it through so I'm just going to rinse all these off and I'm really pleased they're in good nick I don't have to do a deal to them at all let's have a look at the plate underneath as you can see, they look fine. There's no real staining anywhere. All of the plates are in good shape and all of the gaskets are in perfect condition apart from two, which I've seen where these little tabs look like they're just cracking off. So I don't mind if we lose a tab or two. I just don't want to see any splits in the gasket proper. So we're just in the process of reassembly and it's relatively straightforward. I'm just putting them back together the way they came out. But something I thought was worthy of note, this section here is blank on one end. It's got no uh, steel circles punched out. So what happens with a plate like this is it introduces a direction change in the flow of the liquids in the chiller which means that it's introducing slightly different fluid dynamics and a little bit more turbulence to basically allow uh, the efficiency of the cooler to improve. So you've got the beer coming in at the bottom. It has to come up here uh, to get out of the hole in the plate chiller, but then it gets to this dead end and it's redirected and uh, in fact I've already put one of these blanks in so it's coming up in this section then across then down and then it's going to come up and then down so it's zigzagging not just up the plate chiller and exchanging heat with the cold water coming in the other direction but it's going up and down as well throughout the plate chiller and that gives you a much more efficient uh, surface contact and mixture of the fluids within the plate chiller to transfer that heat in a shorter amount of distance really because we are talking distance that that fluid is traveling while it's in contact with the cooling fluid coming in the other direction and there'll be all sorts of calculations to determine how many turns you want and the shape of the plates and all that kind of thing that's way above my pay grade though so we've got the whole assembly put back together and we 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 nipped up we nipped up on most of these on this block on most of the places uh, there you can go look 92 mil is the spacing it's worked out perfectly so i've just hooked up this little pressure gauge which i normally use for testing pressure on uh keg lines in the pub actually just got a john guest fitting for release on the end and really is quite a simple affair. So I've just run water through it, so there's very little air in the system. Let's give it a pressure test. Hey! So there, that bouncing means there is a little bit of air in the system somewhere. But it looks like we're settled in smack bang at three bar. I know it's upside down. There you go, for all the pedants out there. So I'm going to turn the valve back off again and we'll come back in 10 minutes and see if we're still at 3 bar. So I've just been brought a package from the pub from, um, there was a young lad who used to work for us called JJ and his dad comes in, Mark, and he drinks beer quite regularly. I'm guessing he's been watching the videos. So I'd like to say thanks for this, Mark. 
I think it was yesterday's vlog. I said I was missing some ring spanners. There we go. 7 sixteenths, 15 mil, and 16 mil. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much indeed. These are actually elsewhere, don't worry. I'm not missing all them. I don't think I am, anyway. Oh, look at that. We've almost got a full collection. Cheers, Mark.